All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna go on a quick drive here on Mother's Day. It's hot, so it's gonna be a short video, but I wanna talk about how Kundalini energy moves the assemblage point. It doesn't just shift it. Now, those of you who have watched my videos and those who are familiar with the works of Carlos Castaneda know that there's a difference between a shift of the assemblage point and a movement of the assemblage point. The two are very much so different, and the two create drastically different results. Shifting of the assemblage point is something that is nowhere near as detrimental to the programmed mind and ego in comparison to the moving of the assemblage point. Moving of the assemblage point drastically alters one's life to the point where you can't really go back from that point. In fact, moving the assemblage point by way of the Kundalini igniting and reconfiguring the energy field of man and womankind. That is truly how we exit the matrix. That is indeed the taking of the red pill. Most people aren't aware of this, and here on this channel, we're, here, we're about the truth, so let's talk about the truth. Everything's been veiled for far too long, ladies and gentlemen, and the more you become conscious, the more you'll realize that everything's been laid out right in front of your eyes. You were just in a state where you couldn't see it. So, again, the problem is that the, on, from a cultural perspective, and I'm talking about people in the United States because I live here in the United States, people in America have had their assemblage points repositioned during the initial stages of their developmental process, processes when they were young. When you were young, you came out of the womb, you started to observe the world around you, and you took all the information as units of information and instructed your subconscious mind on how to interpret reality. Now, because the matrix works by keeping everybody in the same assemblage point position, or they want you to, they want everybody to interpret reality the same way, which is a realm of hard objects. They want to take your free assemblage point, which you had at a young age, which is why you interacted with the world in a completely different way than you did do now when you were younger. You could see things that you can't see anymore, you name it. This is why all the brain dead parents stand around the baby and think it's cute that the baby's like doing a thousand yard stare off into the distance and pointing at things that aren't there. It's stuff that's actually there. The parents have just been programmed by culture to not interpret reality the same way that the innocent baby has. But there is some truth in the fact that we are born in sin, not of sin. All of you Christian idiots out there who want to tell me that, you know, oh, you're born full of sin, you're a moron, and you're perpetuating a mind control religion that was created behind closed doors by hierarchies of very, very powerful people to control your monkey ass, but you're not born in or of sin. Your flesh is not sinful, fool, but you're born into a world of sin and you begin to take on characteristics of your environment at a young age. And as this happens, your energy field and your consciousness, which at one point had a deeper interaction with the electromagnetic spectrum when you were a baby, everything reconfigures. You instruct your subconscious mind to close itself off from the magic of your youth and you become hooked up to the breeding system of the thousand headed ass as Dr. Reverend Phil Valentine calls it, you become another brick in the wall, kind of like that Pink Floyd song, just another, conf or just another unit of information amongst the matrix. Just another little piece to add to the collection of stolen souls out here. So there's so much we could talk about. There's so many other things that could be said, ladies and gentlemen. It makes me, I could throw up thinking about it. There are so many layers to the onion of mind control. The complexity of this thing, as well as the simplicity, is the ultimate paradox. The ultimate paradox. The ultimate cosmic joke. And, you know, we've been reconfigured. We have been reconfigured. We have been reconfigured. When are you going to get it? And we have to reconfigure ourselves to integrate back with the old configuration that was stolen from us at a young age. 
This is sickening to the core. And all of you motherfuckers who want to act like, oh, just calm down, bro. Why are you so angry? Why are you so sterile in this predatory world where your soul is what's up for takes? Your lucidity. The lucidity of your soul, of your spirit, is what's up for grabs. And you want to act like everything's just about peace and all this other bullshit? You're the type of people that make me sick and you do not have that flame. You do not have that heat. You do not have the fire of Gnosis, that Luciferian-like flame, that Promethean flame. Trying to act like the epitome of spirituality is to come here and realize the evil and just tolerate it. Part of tolerating it, ladies and gentlemen, is learning to wake up from it and not integrate with it. You have to rebel against it. I hope that makes sense. That's something that, that phrase right there, I could have, I could go off in a million different ways and I'm not going to get into it. And you may think that, oh, do you practice, you, you preach stoicism. You should just learn to accept everything and be okay with it. Ladies and gentlemen, having a passionate response to the evil stimuli is not negativity. You, you don't know what actual negativity is, ladies and gentlemen. Negativity is when you dwell on meaningless nonsense that drags your soul down and you waste, end up wasting time. Me having a little bit of heat against my enemy is what allows me to be two steps ahead of my enemy while still at the same time being radically calm. Again, there's like a paradox of sorts here. It's difficult to explain, but you you see a very small fraction of me. You hear a very small fraction of me. People acting like, oh, you're angry, bro. You're angry Well, this, that, and the other. Well, then you, when I get on this camera, it's usually when I've, it's usually at very specific times when I have a lot to unload and I'm letting some of the passion out. I'm not gonna be like another one of these new age pawns that just wants to tell you to to think that everything happens for a reason and yada, 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 and accept everything. I don't believe that. That's what makes me different. I am a practitioner on the left-hand path, the real left-hand path, not this new age bullshit where people think that they're on the left-hand path because they use satanic symbols and all this other bullshit, ladies and gentlemen. No, that is not what the left-hand path is about. The left-hand path is largely built around individuality and reinforcing the psyche, strengthening the psyche against the constant mass inertia and erosion of culture, the thousand-headed ass, the culture of death, the grinding stone of humanity, which is the human mass configuration on an energetic level that we've all been thrown into. What do you think binds you to the matrix? It's your energy field, ladies and gentlemen. The energy field is what the archons feed on. Just like in the movie, The Matrix, how when they're plugged into the pod and Neo and all the people are hooked up at very specific meridian and chakra points near his medulla oblongata, etc. That's all symbolism. That is Gnostic symbolism. You are plugged in and you don't even know it. What does Morpheus tell Neo in The Matrix? Take a look around, Neo. What do you see? Carpenters, policemen, yada yada yada. Until these people are wake, or are until these people wake up, they are still a part of the system, which makes them our enemy. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. And I'm not saying that all carpenters or policemen are bad people who are hooked up to the matrix, but let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, not a, not a whole lot of people have actually had their assemblage point moved to the proper position through the Kundalini igniting. Most people are still plugged into the motherfucking matrix, whether they want to believe that or not. And you will not know the truth of my words and be able to integrate it when I say those things until you have used your sorcery long enough to reconfigure figure or move the assemblage point or shift it enough to be able to move you into new alien realms of consciousness so you could observe the old pig pen that you were in prior that you were put into by the cultural hypnosis it's kind of like that movie the dark crystal it's also kind of like the movie the dark city with keith or sutherland they're doing shit like that ladies and gentlemen the world that you interact with on a daily basis does not work the way that you think it does the obvious is not the fact if that makes sense. What you perceive to be real is 
is not real. The immaterial, ladies and gentlemen, is not, or the material is not material. The material realm is immaterial. Everything is an illusion. Everything is, is an illusion. Your eyes have been trained to lie to you. Not that your eyes are evil, ladies and gentlemen. It's because you were born in sin. Not be, it's, You weren't born evil. You were born into an evil world. And you learned at a very young age, before you could fend for yourself, you learned to mimic the world on an energetic level of your peers. You became like your parents. You became like the world around you. And you had to. What, what are you going to do at a young age? You can't feed yourself. You can't clean yourself. You learn to be vulnerable. And in a state of vulnerability, you comply to the mass inertia, the weight of the energetic configuration of your peers. This is how you've become what you are at this present moment. And chances are you don't even know you're brainwashed. There's a good chance that you think you're conscious because you have crystals and because you took ayahuasca and all this other nonsense. Ladies and gentlemen, when you think you've figured it out, you better question what you've been clinging to. Kind of like that tool song 46 and two question what we've been clinging to. Because when you think you've had it, when you, there's a good chance when you think you've figured it out, you're far from it. And this is why I talk about the ritualized slaying of self-importance. Because thinking that you've got all the answers, it's predicated upon a foundation of wanting to think you're right. Wanting to project out into the world your perceived authority or superiority. You don't have any of that, ladies and gentlemen, because you've been brooded in a world that turns you into a domesticated creature living in a false environment. Self-importance is not a bad thing, but when you project a false version of yourself that takes massive amounts of psychic energy and mental energy to uphold out into the world just to fit in. Ladies and gentlemen, that's fake and it's causing a massive grinding of your gears mentally. You are losing your lifespan, projecting a false version of yourself into the world. Almost just hit a squirrel. Excuse me. I had to swerve the car just to the point where if I kept going, I would crash, but I knew how to handle the vehicle. Squirrels are pretty cool. But a self-important, this is all just an insane mess, ladies and gentlemen. And we begin to unplug through the thoughtlessness exercise, the full body relaxation exercise, structured magical practice, keeping a magical diary, and working your sorcery. But sorcery is one of those things that I don't recommend people do because it's exceptionally dangerous and I'm not trying to drive anyone insane here. And with sorcery, by enter entering into states of non-ordinary reality, you can tip yourself past. You can take your consciousness into realms where what you see sees you. And the things that you can experience and learn from non-ordinary states of reality it can ruin your life because it can ruin your sanity. You see, you use your false little version of yourself, your little egotistical, self-centered, narcissistic viewpoint. You think you're just like the shit. This is why you all show off and all the stupid shit you do. You learn, you love your false self. You love the false self. This is the true demon. This is the true Mara. This is the true... Uh, devil on your shoulder, folks. The false version of yourself. You see, you're steady blaming entities and all this other shit. It's you. You are far more guilty than you think. Come on, guys. This is just, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. When the assemblage point starts shifting, and if you can move it through Kundalini Awakening, your very thoughts will become more organic and more real. Your emotions, the very fabric of who you are and how you feel and interpret the fucking world will become more real and more solid and more holy and more divine than all the fake fucking churches and all the other fake shit out here, folks. You will become more real than the world around you. And it will get to a point through your magical work, your sorcery, ladies and gentlemen, etc. etc. Through the combined effort of your practice, you will see by becoming real in this fake world how everything is fake and fabricated to keep humanity enslaved. 
It's insane. It is something to witness. It is something to behold, ladies and gentlemen. And we've gone over a wide spectrum of protocols. We've gone over so many things on how to live in this world yet not of it while having massive amounts of inner strength and peace. I'm going to wrap this one up. I've got to go. I love you all. May peace be with you.